Hey everyone, Blue Squadron here with another video series on how to do an X-Wing Miniatures mod. This time I'm going to do a customized, customized YT-1300, in other words, known as Lando's Millennium Falcon. This piece is actually going to be the first place trophy for an Austin X-Wing City Championship. Special thanks to Kaz Perch, who bought this YT-1300 for me to work on, and is going to paint it gold for the gold medal winner. Let's go ahead and get started by cracking this thing open. Conveniently, there's a small gap behind the cockpit where I can stick in a flat screwdriver. What I found while opening this thing up is that unlike the other Millennium Falcon models, there are far fewer posts that hold the entire thing together. In fact, there are a number of uh, tabs that essentially join the top and bottom halves apart. There are actually fewer pieces overall as well. Just like the Resistance Falcon, the engine is actually a grill that's a uh, semicircular piece of plastic that's clipped into place. Unlike other Falcon models, there are plastic clips holding the back half together. However, the front half is the part that's most difficult to get apart. What I'm trying to do is pop one of the posts that's inside the body very close to the radar dish. You'll notice in the video that I'm trying to pry both halves apart with a Phillips screwdriver. That's a big mistake. I was just too lazy to go downstairs and find my uh, standard screwdriver. Eventually, I got frustrated enough to actually go into the garage and find a standard screwdriver, and with a twisting motion, the uh, post actually separates very easily. The circular section, or the crew section, or the part with all of Lando's capes, whatever you want to call it, that part's easy to separate. What's difficult are the mandibles. I apologize for the centering, I was getting pretty frustrated and wasn't looking at my monitor for the camera. Just like the previous Falcon models, there are posts holding both halves of the mandibles together. However, unlike the previous models, there's an additional plastic tab that's been placed close to the headlights. You can actually see that as I'm prying with my screwdriver, I've released uh, the posts. However, I'm being impeded by that plastic tab, which is glued in there very firmly. It turns out that I should probably have worked on the mandibles first and then worked my way backwards. And the reason for that is because, unlike the previous versions of the Falcon, the canopy of the cockpit is now fused to the bottom half of the shell. There's a large plastic collar leading into the cockpit, so the whole thing is designed for you to release the front and then release the back and then slide the top half backwards to open up the uh, body. You'll notice that in all my prying, I actually broke uh, the bottom half of the Falcon. Now the bottom half is the thin side, which is basically why a piece of the mandible snapped off, and it's still stuck into the top half of the mandible by that plastic tab. I'm just hoping that that golden paint job Cass is going to put on later on is going to cover up any of those imperfections from me repairing the, uh, the mandible. To free it up, I used some flush cutters to cut away the plastic tab from in the inside and then pry out that little piece of plastic, which I will save to reattach later. When you're working with a model that was designed to be put together and never taken apart again, uh, you always run the risk of breaking something that you're going to have to patch later on with green stuff, super glue, and Hopefully a good eye for paint matching. If Lando thought the Kessel Run was rough on his Falcon, well, he probably hasn't seen this video. One of the customizations that I'm making is to take the radar dish and turn it into a button you can push down on to get some fiber optic targeting indicators to show which arc direction you're currently facing. Unfortunately, I grabbed the wrong pair of pliers and broke off the antenna on the radar dish. I'm going to have to pin it in place and glue it later on. What I really wanted to use instead of needle nose pliers are these angled pliers, which are much thinner and allow me to get underneath the radar dish. Going back in time, I'd probably try to remove the radar dish by using a Dremel to cut away the plastic that's holding it in on the bottom side of the dorsal shell. In the next cringeworthy video, I'm going to show you some of the modifications that I made to install a power port and a switch on the ventral side of Lando's Millennium Falcon. Thanks for watching.